Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Today is April the sixteenth, two thousand and eighteen. Right. Understand this video is not a um, offer of financial advice. Right. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. What you want to do is you want to consult with your own financial advisor uh, for any uh, thoughts and consideration of the subject matter raised in this video. While cryptocurrency is bouncing back, people need to understand that cryptocurrency has real use in the real world, right? It's not a fad. It's not a bubble because it solves problems efficiently, more efficiently than the status quo, right? So let's give an example. In the Showtime fictional series, Billions, they have a money manager, a hedge fund guy, Bobby Axelrod, who wants to receive money clandestinely, right? He wants to receive money privately. Now, there's nothing wrong with private transactions, right? The dollar bill in your wallet, there isn't a ledger that places it somewhere. You can go use that dollar bill to buy the newspaper. No one's going to keep track of your purchase of the newspaper, right? That's the way American history has been. No one should have to explain why they want to engage in a private transaction in a free market economy. So, Bobby Axelrod wants to be paid privately. So he asked for the payment in cryptocurrency, right? This is on the fictional show. What I want people to do is to just Think about in the real world which cryptocurrency would actually solve Bobby Axelrod's desire for privacy. Just think about the demand out there for private transactions for whatever reason. Right? Well, in the real world, there's a set of cryptocurrencies that are more private than others. Right, that would enable you to do a transaction without leaving your signature on the blockchain. Understand, Bitcoin isn't private. There, you're using a pseudonym, but people can trace the pseudonym to you. Right, the blockchain is online. Ideally, you want to engage in transactions where they're as private as using cash, where the blockchain doesn't have the fact that the money came from you or was received by you and doesn't even know how much the transaction was for. We want to go beyond the technology of coin mixers like Dash into an even more private world, above and beyond coin mixing. So in the real world, the cryptocurrencies Bobby Axelrod would be considering, and on the show they just say cryptocurrency, but in the real world, he'd be considering Zencash. Right? Zencash is very interesting, folks. I encourage you to Google and research Zencash. It's not in the top 100 on CoinMarketCap.com in terms of crypto market caps. But this is an advanced cryptocurrency that continues to get more advanced, right? Within the last few days, they've announced super nodes, right? Above and beyond secure nodes. I would encourage you, if you're someone interested in privacy, to read up on Zencash. There's also Zcash, Zcoin, Pivx. Z Classic and Bitcoin Private. 
right? I would encourage you to research everything, understand some of these coins have split from other coins. Bitcoin private has split off from Z Classic, not Bitcoin, right? And these coins use very advanced technology to keep transactions private. Understand, because these coins are solving real world problems with very low transaction costs, right? They're not fads. These coins aren't tulips. They're tools. Now let's talk about IPOs a little bit. You know the way an IPO works, right? You're a company, you want to sell fractional ownership to the public. So, you're going to work with an underwriting syndicate. They're going to assume the risk of your IPO. They're going to buy the shares from you. Right? They're comprised of investment banking groups. Folks, it's these groups that are making the big money on Wall Street. Right? It's these groups that are paying for the Lamborghinis being driven by all these Wall Street types. Well, what the underwriting syndicate does is they'll buy the IPO and then they'll resell it to the public with the help of placement groups, right? That'll place the security on the stock exchange. Well, understand, as you can imagine, the process is expensive. Just imagine if the company issuing the IPO could actually skip the Wall Street layer, the underwriting syndicate populated by investment banking groups. Just imagine if they could actually sell their fractional ownership to you directly, directly, while complying with SEC regulations, while complying with anti-money laundering regulations, right? Just imagine if they could put all of the required disclosures into a token, and if they could then sell that token to you directly, right? Now, what I want people to understand is we're now in the world of T0. And I want people to go to t0.com. They actually have a great video that explains their platform. T0 is owned in large part by publicly traded overstock.com. You know them. Company's been around. The company's been very successful. Right? You can research their financials. Understand, too, T0 is working with Polymass, right? A token that's out on the market. You can research Polymath. It's listed on coinmarketcap.com. You can go to Polymath's website and you can read all about it, right? Understand that if you remove the underwriting syndicate comprised of investment bankers from the equity distribution. If you're able to give accredited investors, right, and people can be whitelisted under the T0 process, direct access to capital markets, then they can actually get more value from the IPO, so to speak. They'd have more control over their funds. 
the cost of what they're buying would be cheaper than it is with the underwriting syndicate taking a cut. Folks, the market is huge. Right? Just imagine all of these stocks being tokenized. Just imagine you being able to immediately get delivery of the token that you've purchased. Just imagine that token being a stock, having as part of it all of the know your customer disclosures. Right? Just imagine that token being extensible, unlike a piece of paper that's a share of stock. Just imagine that the token can add features, right, about the part of the company that you just bought. Just imagine the immediate delivery of that token to you through the internet. Folks, the technology exists, it exists today. Let me point out that if you want a piece of T0, you can literally just get it by buying a piece of overstock. Incredibly, overstock stock price has been down of late. Think about it, right? I don't have to be able to navigate the world of tokens at this point. If T0 is a subsidiary of Overstock, I can just buy stock in Overstock and have part of the upside of T0. Let me go one step further and just point out that Overstock has a lot of blockchain projects going on right now. Right? You need to think of Overstock as more than an online retailer. Right? I encourage you to look carefully at Overstock.com. Let's also talk about the current hedge fund regime. Right? You know the way the system works. I send a bunch of money, right? For some places, half a million dollars. For others, a million dollars. Whatever. I send a bunch of money to some outfit. Right? They manage the money for me. They invest it as they see fit. Then, of course, to have their services, I have to pay them 20% of whatever the profits are. Right? And I also have to pay them 2% of the amount of money that I've sent them. Now, what I want people to do is I want people to look at Berkshire Hathaway's letter to shareholders in which Warren Buffett, a critic of the current hedge fund default regime, right, points out that index funds over time outperform hedge funds as a whole. And they do so with much less operational costs. Right? But be that as it may, just understand, with the hedge fund, I'm getting a statement after the fact about what happened the last quarter. Right? Somebody else is making the trades, not me. I've just given them my money. They then tell me how I'm doing Right after the fact. Well, let me just say, understand, in the world of tokenization, you're going to have these hedge funds being displaced and replaced by newsletters, right? Understand the newsletter gurus out there, right? Whether it's um, William Bonner, whether it's Porter Stansberry's group, whoever it is, they stand to gain from you actually having control over your own money. Imagine if your stock portfolio is actually tokens online that you control. Instead of hearing from your very expensive hedge fund manager after the fact about trades, imagine if before the fact, the hedge fund manager 
you know, sent out something electronically, perhaps, online, alerting you to trade opportunities, think Motley Fool, etc. Right? Imagine if they alerted you to trade opportunities, and if you're someone who likes to look at and consider the possible trades yourself before they happen, you would then have an opportunity to ask yourself, hey, do I want to go on T0 or wherever and execute this trade? There'd be a lot more transparency than me getting a hedge fund statement after the fact telling me how we did last quarter. Right Here, you're actually involved on the front end, not the after the fact back end. In other words, understand the importance of T0, Polymath, Veritasium, and other security tokens, right? Their existence, their development, their gradual implementation is endangering the premise of shows like Billions. It's endangering Bobby Axelrod's lifestyle, right? It's endangering Bobby Axelrod's existence, right? The current status quo is being challenged by a new status quo that gives you, the consumer, more control over your funds and far more power and information, right? So, to sum up, pay close attention to what's happening in cryptocurrency. I understand that baby boomers barely own any crypto, but understand how fast that's changing, right? The Rockefellers are now into crypto. George Soros has authorized his group to invest in crypto. The Rothschilds are now into crypto. You have countries competing with each other. One of the latest is Malta, trying to woo cryptocurrency exchanges. Right? The world doesn't consist of just China. Unfortunately, the news cycle is such that when a country like China cracks down on cryptocurrency, why? Because they want capital controls. They don't want their currency leaving the country, especially not with their debt level. Right? When China announces that it's cracking down on cryptocurrency or India, that news goes around the globe quickly, doesn't it? And it ignores the fact that you have countries like Japan where cryptocurrency is legally recognized as legal tender. Right? So, if you get one takeaway from this video, I hope it's to look at T0. Again, at T0.com, they have a video explaining the technology. Right? Consider the fact that T0 is working with Polymath. I would encourage you to go to Polymath's website. Right? All of these websites are listed, uh, well, most of them, on coinmarketcap.com. Right? T0's website is t0.com. I also want you to just research the privacy coins I've mentioned. Zencash doing remarkable things. Things. Understand, Zencash is more than a privacy coin. Folks, it's a privacy platform. Right? Zencash now has privacy oriented messaging. They're going to take on YouTube. They're going to have privacy oriented media. Right? Also, look at Zcash, Zcoin, Pivx, Bitcoin Private. Z Classic. Just like your cash is useful. Just like your ability to make purchases without signing some register. 
is an important ability to have. So too are these privacy-centric coins. Understand the technology has improved greatly over the last five years. You now have the ability to do transactions that you can confirm on the blockchain without people knowing the participants of the transaction or the amount of the transaction. Right? So, I hope people understand if you're looking for fads, cryptocurrency and the blockchain is not the place to look because that's not a fad. That's useful technology. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.